G'day, Professor Joseph Drew here. In this video, I'll tell you what you need to be doing if you're starting as a research student. I have a couple about to start, and I've had several in the past that have been successful in their PhD quest. These are the things you need to do if you want to experience success as well. Indeed, these are mostly things I did myself as a PhD student, and I finished my PhD in 12 months. I had it handed in. I uh, had seven A-ranked papers published at that time. So the technique works. You've got to work hard, but it does work. So where did I start? I started by printing a ginormous stack of papers from all of the greatest in the field. If you want to learn how to be a great researcher, start by reading the greats. Learn from them. So I printed up James Buchanan and Albert Hirschman, and I especially printed up lots and lots of papers from my supervisor, who happened to be one of the greats anyway, Emeritus Professor Dollery. You need to know what your supervisor normally writes about. You need to have selected a supervisor who is an active researcher. And I have a video on that somewhere in this YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched it, I suggest you watch that one too. Work hard and efficiently. None of this work smarter, not harder. No, you need to work hard and you need to work smart. You know, PhD is meant to be a difficult thing. Otherwise, everyone would have them. So, you know, when I was working, I typically, well, still, I work 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., six days a week. Uh, that's typical if you want to succeed. If you're not willing to put in the work, the big hours, well, you're probably not going to get the outcomes. My last PhD student, extremely successful, Dr. McQuiston, dual PhDs, in fact, um, she used to work, or she didn't stumble out of bed until about nine, but she used to work to midnight, most days, six days a week. That's the sort of effort and dedication that's required to excel. And if you're, you don't have the capacity to do that, or you're not willing to do it, stop and think and ask yourself whether you're actually doing the right thing. It's not meant to be a gift. It's meant to be something that only the best of the best get. And work efficiently, work smart. So when I make, for instance, when I'm when I'm doing a research paper and I'm making up a database, I don't just use it for one paper. If I make a database, I want to get four, five, six academic empirical papers out of it. If you're going to put in, you know, a month's effort getting the database together, which I do at the beginning of every year, you want to get lots and lots of work out of that. Otherwise, you're wasting too much time preparing. You need to actually be doing the work. So think it through. Think what else you can get out of the work that you're doing at present. Think and improve. It's your PhD. You're the one that's meant to be doing the thinking. Too many PhD students are just waiting for their supervisor to come up with the next idea, to tell them what to do next, to tell them what next step is, to tell them every single little step on the journey. It's your PhD, not mine. I've already done one. So think yourself and improve on what your supervisor suggests. Show some initiative. This is what you're supposed to be demonstrating. I remember, in fact, one paper in particular, Emeritus Professor Dollery uh, asked me to do a paper on the classification systems. Personally, no offense, Brian, but I don't think it was one of your best ideas. I think it was a pretty ordinary idea. But I gave it a whole new twist and did it in a different way to what he first expected. Um, and with his help, I got it accepted in the best local government journal in the world. So even not so good ideas can be made awesome with a good write-up, with a good theory, with a twist on theory. You need to be adding to it. The other thing to remember too is your supervisor is not putting as much thought into the idea and the progress of the papers you ought to be doing. That's all you're doing. Your supervisor has their own research to do. In my case, I've got consulting to do as well and teaching. Um, they're not spending all day thinking about it. That's your job. That's what you should be doing. So if you can improve on it, don't just accept everything I say. If you can think about it, is there a better way? Can I improve on it? Is there something else I could be doing? It's your PhD. Take feedback constructively. I remember a PhD student in particular, very um, confident person, very nice person too, sent a paper off to one of the best journals in the field when he was just starting, got really mean 
spirited reviews, and that's quite common when you get nasty reviewers. Often that they're not even right about what they're talking about, but it doesn't stop them from being nasty. Reviewers should be constructive, not nasty, but I'm afraid about half of them are just plain nasty, and about a quarter of them are just plain wrong as well. Uh, got demoralised, never wrote another word. Well, you're not going to get a PhD if you do that. Getting harsh feedback is sadly part of the process. When I do reviews, I make sure they're constructive even if the paper is rubbish. Help them do better. That's what we're supposed to be doing, training the next generation. But sadly, a lot of people don't feel the way I do. Now, when you're getting feedback from your supervisor too, if you're going to take it to heart and fall in a heap every time you get a bit of nut and and praiseworthy feedback you're not going to get far you're going to drop out you need to find what it is that they're getting at and improve it and understand that you're getting this feedback so you can improve even with reviewers as i say in one of my videos about dealing with revisions even when the feedback seems mad and they say you haven't defined such and such when you've defined it twice i got this recently from a reviewer um don't just dismiss the feedback okay it's mad you do define it twice quite clearly and clearly the reviewer has a reading comprehension issue but take away from them that must be some truth there must be a kernel of truth in there somewhere and the truth is obviously you need to define it even more clearly and make it even more obvious that it's a definition use the word definition perhaps because some people didn't gather that when you said financial sustainability is that you were defining the term so look for that kernel of truth in the feedback, even when it seems quite mad. There's no such thing as bad feedback. There's feedback that could be an awful lot more helpful, but take it as an opportunity to improve, because if you're not improving, you're not going to get to the end. Value your supervisor. Most people don't. I probably didn't value my supervisor as much as you should have emeritus Professor Dollar. If you're listening, you're awesome. I'm extremely grateful to you. Um, having phd students is a pain in the backside it takes up a lot of my time where does that time come from it comes from my family and the rest of my life it has to it has to come from somewhere i still have to turn out as much same amount of research i still have to do the same amount of consulting i still have to write my book i still have to do the same amount of teaching so where's it coming it comes from my private life i'm giving to you how does your phd get reviewed it gets reviewed based on a list of potential reviewers that i make which is usually going to be part of your supervisor's network. And they're using up, for want of a better word, favours. If you get your PhD, it's because of your supervisor. Yeah, obviously you've got to do some work yourself. But your supervisor would have played a big part in it. And I think a lot more research students need to be a lot more grateful for what their supervisors give up. We're not here 24-7 at your beck and call. I'm not your servant. I'm your friend that's helping you to achieve what you want to achieve and you need to recognize it as that show due deference and respect I always get taken aback by students who want to call me Joseph um, I don't usually stand on my title but when you're a student and you're wanting something from me Professor Drew might be nice until I say no that's all right just call me Joseph it's things like that. It's those little things. Remember who what, who this person is, that they are a person and they're doing an awful lot for you and treat them accordingly. This is an awesome piece of advice given to me by Emeritus Professor Dollery. Go and get buy a proper dictionary and a proper thesaurus. A lot of academic writing is about using words really carefully and specific to their proper meaning, not our colloquial meaning. So go and get yourself what, those two items. Thesaurus is important. You don't want to keep using the same word all, over, all the time, over and over and over again. Sometimes you have to, like the word local government, but other times you don't. So get a thesaurus and find out some other options. It's not that hard, really, guys. Um, if you're in a certain dic uh, discipline, of course, get a dictionary from that discipline. So I have in my shelves here dictionaries on philosophy. I have a couple of different ones. I have a couple of different dictionaries on economics. And I write on these things all the time, and yet I have the dictionaries and I confer with them because I've got to make sure when you're writing that you're using the terms of your dif discipline very precisely. If you're not, reviewers will spot it and you'll be rejected at the thesis level, at the paper level. 
So go and get a dictionary from the dic uh, from the discipline that you're working in as well. Look, if you're one of my students, don't think this was a criticism, I'm just giving you information, but I'm also trying to help everyone. That's why I put these videos out. Look, if you found it helpful, give me the thumbs up and subscribe. Get a mate to subscribe. Otherwise, you're not going to see many more videos uh, because I don't have many subscribers and I'm not getting much feedback. And there comes a time where you just have to say, well, look, it's not worth the time anymore. Look, I hope you found it helpful. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.